Hello, I'm Mark Chalero, the owner of MS Classic Cars. Today I'm sitting behind the wheel of an absolutely spectacular 1969 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 Custom with 625 horsepower that I have nicknamed Lucky Seven. This particular car, um, I would say, is one of the most uh, user-friendly, bad-to-the-bone Camaros that we've ever had at MS Classic Cars. If you've followed our website, you know that I only collect number one and number two condition vehicles. Uh, every vehicle that we have gets completely serviced through our vigorous service process. It's documented with an invoice. We're the only classic car dealership in the country who does that. Uh, that particular invoice looks like this. Um, it's right here. We're gonna post this within our listing and it clearly shows everything we've done. The total amount that we invested in this car was $8,370. And then of course we do outstanding detail work from top to bottom. So I just wanted to make sure that I made that point. Um, so getting back to the Camaro, um, in some Camaros that we've owned in the past, uh, we've set many uh, records on factory correct cars uh, and custom cars at Barrett Jackson. So when it comes time for first generation Camaros, I'm an excellent judge of character. Uh, so let me get into this uh, particular car here in the story. Um, as the VIN number indicates, this particular car was born um, a eight cylinder coupe it was built uh, in Los Angeles, California. Um, as the original trim tag indicates, the car was originally white uh, and it had a black uh, houndstooth interior. Houndstooth is kind of the checkerboard uh, look which normally is found on the seats uh, and throughout the entire vehicle. Um, it was actually uh, believed to be a California car its whole entire life. I can't document that, but the gentleman who I bought the car from who lives in California. He actually acquired this car in 2006. It was a rust-free, uh, great candidate for a full-blown restoration. He wanted to build the ultimate Pro Touring G machine, and that's exactly what he did. So over the course of a couple years, uh, ending somewhere around 2008, early 2009, the restoration was completed and he built uh, what I would refer to especially at that time is a true super car. To show you how fanatical this gentleman was, um, I normally organize all of my receipts with every car I buy. I purchase a new binder, I put them all in plastic sleeves. Um, this particular gentleman shares the same compulsion disorder that I do and he actually did all of this prior to me purchasing the vehicle. So everything is labeled uh, from the places that he purchased the parts from. Um, he's got a whole schedule. He also has an additional binder, which I'll show you in a minute, 
which has got all the specifications for every single part of this entire car. So getting into this here, um, once we get beyond the invoice that I put in here, you're gonna notice um, that it has a complete breakdown of all the prices. He literally put everything in order and you can see how every single piece, part number, where it came from, what it was, was methodically laid out in all of this paperwork here. This is hours and hours and hours of work and dedication that he put into this. So the new owner of this vehicle can be more than happy to read through it all. It's definitely interesting information, but what I find most interesting is the price. He accounted for all the parts, which was just a hair under $100,000 with the car, and he only accounted for $25 per hour on his labor rate totaling 1,800 hours worth of work, and that came out to $45,000 in labor costs. The total price of the project was $143,302.63. If we used a average labor rate of $85, it would come out to be $153,000 in labor, plus the cost of the car, which brings it over a quarter of a million dollars uh, which again is all fully documented in this binder here. So this is one really special car that I need to educate you on so you clearly understand what this car is all about. Uh, before I get into that, I do wanna also uh, make a note here of these magazines that this car was in. Um, so first magazine here, it's on the cover of Chevy High Performance. It's got a five-page spread about this car inside this magazine. This is included. It was featured inside this magazine here, which is Camaro Performance. This is, a, again, a very well-known magazine. I made a little yellow tab here so I could flip to this page and show you uh, this vehicle on a track. This car actually was on a track here. It shows his time. Uh, this is at an autocross event here in the vehicle. Really, really cool. Um, I will make a note that when he first finished this car, um, he put in a ZZ454 crate motor. Um, so all of these autocross events and things that he did um, were with the original motor that he put in the car. Um, shortly after, he was a little bit disappointed with the power. He wanted to make better times and things like this. So he went out uh, a few years later. I think it was 2013. I'll have to refer to my description. Um, he went out and purchased this engine that's in this car, which I'll get into in a minute, the ZL1. I think the receipts document, which again, I'll verify, like $23,512 he invested in this motor. This is an unbelievable motor. It's fuel injected. And once again, I'll go over all that in a little bit. And last but not least, the car was actually featured in Hot Rodding Magazine, which is another very popular magazine. There's a picture of his vehicle on an autocross track, it talks all about it. Uh, again, so this is a vehicle that is a proven autocross participant. Um, the car has also won multiple awards at various shows, which are listed within our description. Although the magazines are included and the build books are included, the awards are not. He wanted to keep those, which I completely understood. So those are not included with the vehicle uh, or pictured within our description but just be known that the car has won awards. And getting into the exterior of this vehicle, um, it is believed, uh, again, that this vehicle has all the original sheet metal. During the restoration, um, a new cowl hood was added. Um, the front header panel was replaced. Other than that, it's believed to have all the original sheet metal. So all of the panel gaps are really, really nice. The body's really, really straight. Uh, everything fits great. The hood opens beautifully. The doors open beautifully. They close beautifully. So does the trunk lid. So I would say that uh, that's a, a really cool factor when looking at a car that it has all the original sheet metal. Um, getting into the paint. I think the paint on this car is probably one of my most favorite colors, especially on a 69 Camaro of any Camaro I've ever had or, or seen for that matter. It's actually called GM Arrival Blue. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. We have all the paint codes and everything else. There is a bottle of touch-up paint. Um, one of the awards that he claimed that he won was for best paint. So the paint on this vehicle is in absolutely beautiful condition. 
We've detailed it at MS Classic Cars, so it's got a brilliant shine to it. Because this vehicle was finished uh, around that 2009 timeframe, and because it has just a hair under 6,000 miles between the other engine and this engine, total 6,000 miles on the car, it does have some imperfections that you would imagine uh, that has happened over time. Uh, if anybody has any concerns about any imperfections, I'd be more than happy to point them out in a video or we could talk on the phone or whatever the case might be. But this car has got beautiful paint, it's got a beautiful body, uh, it presents itself absolutely magnificently. Um, now, talking about some of the exterior features, everything on this car was replaced during the restoration, starting with the glass. All the glass is new, all the glass is tinted, it's very lightly tinted, but it's tinted, it looks great. All of the stainless around the windows is in beautiful condition and it fits like a glove. A lot of times with classic cars, you'll find that the stainless doesn't fit around the glass. On this car, it does. Um, he did a RS conversion on this car, which um, is really the hideaway headlights. That's kind of what the Rally Sport originally had that separates it from just the normal Camaro. Um, so these uh, hideaway headlights are actually uh, done by Detroit Speed. We actually installed those at MS Classic Cars. When we got the vehicle, it had the headlight covers, but they were non-functioning. You'd have to open them by hand. We went ahead and spent the money and we did them right. Um, they work beautifully. So these are electric headlights. They work awesome. It gives a car just an absolutely killer look. It has obviously a new grill. It's got new bumpers. It's got new dual mirrors, new door handles. Um, everything on the exterior of this car is new. Um, some of the custom features besides the headlights, the Detroit Speed headlights, uh, would be the uh, ZL1 emblems that are on the grill, the fenders, and on the rear panel. Um, it does have uh, custom taillight bezels, which look really nice. Uh, it's just a super nice car that's not overdone. And of course, on the outside, one of the most impressive features is the way the car sits. It has an absolutely killer stance. It sits on 18-inch uh, wheels in the front, 19-inch wheels in the back. Those wheels were made by Budnick. Budnick uh, makes great wheels. They're custom made to order. Um, these wheels are called uh, shotguns. They're actually a polished wheel with a brushed center. They just really, really fit this car well. Uh, I think it just kind of puts the icing on the cake. And getting into the interior of this vehicle, uh, the great part of this interior is it's got the perfect combination of original and custom. So I would refer to it as like slightly custom. Everything in this interior is in like new condition. Everything was either replaced or restored during the restoration. Uh, so to talk a little bit about that, the first thing I'm gonna mention is the headliner is brand new. Um, the headliner does have some wrinkles in it, not a big deal. It definitely was not worth us replacing or anything like that, but I just wanna make sure I mention that. I'm very transparent uh, when I sell vehicles and I just wanted to make sure I noted that. The car does have brand new sun visors. It does have a custom uh, aluminum style rear view mirror here, which is really cool. It's got a new dash. Um, it's got a custom dash fascia. Um, it's got some cool things like Detroit speed, uh, windshield washer knobs and things like that. It also has auto meter um, carbon fiber ultra light gauges, which are really cool. They even put one of the gauges, I believe it's the oil temperature gauge in the ashtray, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's got a tilt steering column, which works great. Um, we actually put a Budnick steering wheel in here. It did not have a Budnick steering wheel when I bought the car. Um, it's kind of like a teardrop style wheel. And um, I think the color of it matches the carbon fiber perfectly. It's a 15 and a half inch wheel, so it's the perfect size for this car. And once again, it kind of complements the Budnick wheels on the outside of the car. Um, before I forget, behind me, it has this Rytec roll bar, which is actually called a Tiger Cage. It even has its own serial number. This is an outstanding roll bar, provides great stability. You can actually disconnect the bar here to let people go into the back, which is really cool. But this is something that's expensive. And again, something that I definitely wanted to mention before I forgot. Um, getting into the rest of the interior here, um, it's got a full length center console. The console was slightly customized. The shift bezel uh, was, was wrapped with carbon fiber, which is great. 
It's got this uh, leather boot here that kind of matches the seats. It's got a Hurst shifter. It's got a black shift knob. Uh, it's got some custom switches. It's got this nice little center console here with storage and also cup holders. You can put your cell phone in there and so forth. Um, it has custom pedals. Um, the door panels are original uh, style door panels, but they do have some really cool, um, you know, billet style uh, window cranks and door handles. Uh, they kind of have like a unique look to them that matches some of the interior. Um, it has these uh, racing style bucket seats here. I forget the name of the brand off the top of my head. Please understand, I uh, just will make one comment as I'm going over these cars. None of the videos that I do on any of my cars are rehearsed videos. We don't take a hundred takes. I'm not reading some card that's going over all the information. It's all the information that I've obtained as I'm writing the descriptions on these cars and learning all this information. So just kind of bear with me through some of these videos, uh, like the name of these seats. I forget what the name is. Uh, I'll have to reference it in the description. But anyway, they're custom racing uh, bucket seats that are wrapped in leather. They have these Sparco uh, four-point harness, which is really cool. It's got factory style uh, seat belts that are in the back of the car. Um, it, the other thing about this interior is it has a custom sound system. It's got a Pioneer uh, head unit, and it also has Infinity uh, kicker speakers, which are nicely tucked in, and it also has Infinity speakers. Uh, I believe they're six by nines on the rear package tray, which is great. And I believe uh, behind the upholstery work in the trunk, there's an Alpine amplifier. It's got a really, really nice uh, sound system in it. So once again, everything in this interior is new. Everything was replaced. It's really, really sweet. Um, even the, the carpeting, um, they put the Be Quiet insulation under the carpeting to keep out road noise and things like that. And they used a higher quality carpet than the normal pile carpet that came from the factory. And of course, it's got uh, custom floor mats that have the word Camaro written on them, pretty cool. Uh, talking about the trunk area, the trunk, uh, once again, that was also wrapped with the Be Quiet installation. Um, they actually made uh, custom panels for the trunk. They, I call it boxed, they box the trunk, and then they wrap the panels with a leather material, so it kind of matches the interior real nicely. They even added a uh, Chevrolet blue, a blue bow tie to the back, which kind of matches the, the exterior color and they put a Optima red top battery in the back with its own uh, aluminum case that Optima sells. There's a uh, battery cutoff there. There's also a spot for a trickle charger, which is included with the car. I took pictures of that and put them within our gallery. Um, so again, it has a, a bunch of things that are included with the car, uh, like a laptop for the fuel injection system. It's got a car cover, all these build books, the magazines, um, the charger, uh, it's got touch-up paint, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll see all that within the listing. Now, talking about the engine compartment, one of my favorite parts of this car. Um, first of all, the back side of the hood is painted the same color as the body. A lot of time was invested in that. A lot of people will not do that. This guy, when he did the car, he actually did that, which looks really impressive. Um, it's got a chrome hood spring for the latch assembly, which looks really nice. It also has Detroit Speed aluminum hood hinges, which are awesome. Uh, definitely something that uh, complements the engine bay. The firewall of the vehicle was painted satin black. Um, the inner fenders are actually carbon fiber. I believe the company was Abel, if I'm not mistaken, who he purchased those from. The great thing about those inner fenders, not only do they look great, but they're functional. They're wider than the factory ones, so you can put a bigger front wheel under the car, so when you're turning it, you don't have to worry about clearance issues. Also, they weigh 15 pounds less than what the original ones did. Uh, so that's also something that helps with weight ratios, especially when you're doing autocross events and things like that. Um, you'll notice the Fiesler, uh, another good brand in the business, you'll notice that um, it has fender support, uh, supports, which actually connect to the radiator support. And talking about that radiator support, um, AutoFab actually made a custom radiator shroud for this vehicle, which was powder coated. Um, they did a beautiful job with all that. They also supplied the aluminum radiator for this vehicle, which has got two dual electric fans. This car never really gets above 190 degrees. It absolutely 
uh, you know, stays very, very cool. He did some other really cool things with the cooling system and so forth. Now, talking about the actual heart of the car, the car is powered by a GM Performance ZL1. Uh, it's a 489 uh, V8 that has 625 horsepower. This is one of the best engines that you could purchase. Uh, maybe if you wanted to go the direction of an LS and have something that's completely different, you could always go that route. But if you're looking for something that's somewhat nostalgic, in my opinion, I don't think you could ever purchase a better engine than what's in this car. Baroque's heads, which are great aluminum heads, it's got the best Holley fuel injection system that money can buy. One of my mechanics uh, commented that that's, in his opinion, the best fuel injection system that they have. Um, they really did some outstanding work to this engine. And as I mentioned to you earlier in this build book here, I was gonna reference the cost of that engine. It's right here. Um, it says here, engine, all aluminum, ZL1. You know, aluminum, uh, a lot of advantages to that, lightweight. Uh, you get great power out of them, uh, reliability, things like that. There's a lot of accessories on this engine, talking about the air cleaner, the valve covers, the wires, the pulleys, all the stuff that's attached to the engine. Um, he put here that that was $23,512. So if you could imagine, just the engine alone was $23,512. Think about that. Um, now the engine um, is breathes through uh, ceramic coated headman headers uh, which are great well-known headers and it has a magnaflow exhaust system so it has a super super tone to it they actually wrapped a portion of the headers and a portion of the exhaust uh, with heat tape to keep it cool uh, in the areas that it needed to be so a lot of thought went into that um, and more importantly talking about the um, the transmission which the engine is coupled to this outstanding T56 Magnum six-speed transmission. It's one of the best transmissions that money can buy. The transmission is really, really user-friendly to operate. It shifts beautifully. This Hertz uh, is more of a short throw shifter, so it's really comfortable to operate. The clutch in this car is unbelievable. This is one of the best clutches you can buy. It's a dual uh, disc clutch. Um, it was rated to handle over a thousand horsepower. I think that clutch alone was almost two thousand dollars. My mechanic said it's one of the best clutches that you can actually put in a car. So again, starting with the cooling system, the exhaust system, the engine, the transmission, the clutch system, um, there's so much more I could talk about regarding all that. One thing I do want to make one comment on is it has an accumulator oil uh, pump system. So when you first turn the key, it actually shoots the engine with more oil to prolong uh, the engine's life and everything. I mean, there's so many little things like that that were done that when you go to our description and actually read about this car, you're gonna be amazed. Uh, even the fuel system, uh, the fuel pump and the fuel tank and all the lines, and he just spent so much money on the best parts that you could put into the car uh, throughout the entire restoration. Um, this transmission is, is actually, uh, the power spun through a um, custom drive shaft that is actually carbon fiber. I believe the drive shaft uh, weighs like 12 pounds less than the original style steel drive shaft, which is really cool. I forget the name uh, of the brand of the drive shaft. You'll have to look at that within our description, but that's really cool. I think this is like the first car I've ever owned that actually has a carbon fiber drive shaft. Um, and then talking about the rear end, it has a Mosier 12 uh, bolt posi rear end. It's got a lot of high uh, internal parts in the rear end uh, for durability, reliability, things like that. So again, you'll have to read all about that. Getting into the undercarriage of this vehicle, the underneath was finished in a semi-gloss black. The undercarriage is definitely mirror quality. It's very, very, very nice underneath. The car has a completely custom power steering system. Uh, again, I don't remember the name of the company who actually built it, um, but it's actually a real recognized name uh, in the business. There's actually a external power steering reservoir, uh, which has got fins in it to keep it cool if you wanna take the car on the track. So again, I can't brag enough about the power steering system. It does have Willwood uh, four-wheel uh, disc brakes at all four corners. 
Um, it has 14 inch uh, in the front, 13 inch in the back, six piston calipers. Um, it even has the street race uh, pads in the braking system. So again, these brakes were set up uh, to not only drive on the street and get great stopping power, but to also autocross in. So it's got great brakes. And getting into the suspension system, the entire suspension system has been fully customized. Um, it's got great brand names like uh, QA1s, which um, do a lot of suspension work, Hotchkiss, um, things like that. So again, it's got adjustable coilovers. Uh, I did remember reading that the coilovers can be adjusted for the street. They can be adjusted for the track. They're like a double set uh, type of coilover system. But again, all high-end suspension, all high-end brakes, all high-end everything throughout this car. As I mentioned earlier, this binder will document that almost $100,000 was spent on the car as what it was before he restored it and all the parts that he put in this car along the way. So this is a great car. I'm super proud of it. If you're somebody who's looking for a nice show car that you are want to get in and drive um, and really pound the pavement, have a ton of fun with, with a lot of options, this is the car for you. So I'm going to go ahead and start it to let you listen how beautiful it runs. Make sure to visit msclassiccars.com for a full description with tons of photos. Um, you can see everything that I've talked about here today um, and you can witness it for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. It's been probably a half hour since I started the car. I only let it warm up outside for maybe about a minute or two. But one of the great things about this, this motor and this fuel injection system is the car really runs like a small block but has massive big block power. Ready? Starts right up. This is basically 